Hello, hello, and good evening, everyone. To ask the gynecologist tonight is Dr. J on the show. Uh, I was here yesterday around this time, I think around 9 p.m. yesterday, but unfortunately, we couldn't go, we couldn't continue because the network was bad in Nigeria and most people would not be able to join us. So we had to discontinue the show. But nevertheless, also, I was exhausted at yesterday as well. I was just trying to push it. You know, sometimes after you've done our work in the hospital all day, you get back home, your battle starts online, you're exhausted. This happens once in a while, but in all, we give glory to God. And yesterday was amazing because a lot of people joined on Instagram. Uh, but on Facebook, it was quiet. Today, we are back live, and I'm so happy, and I'm thrilled to be here. Most importantly, I want to welcome Oba Fie on Instagram, Okiere6515 on Instagram, Pamela, and the other day, the, I can't read your name, Priscilla, for the six. And also on Facebook here, we have people joining in. Today, I want to tell you something. There's wonderful development on the iOS system. We submitted our app to iOS a long time ago. It took a while, but today they are responding, and I'm sure by the grace of God, in the next few hours or next 24 hours, we shall have a positive news, and we'll be able to start and go live on our iOS app. The Android app is ready almost uh, four months ago, but the iOS is the one giving us hustle. But we'll get there. So once again, I want to say good evening to you all. My name is Dr. Day. I want to say good evening to BV and Dico Briggs. I am midday. I your midday lay on your corn. Diogu maybe all in Gazi Emanuela. Emanuela in Nemerem or cheer on your Bridget. Fanka Ogo, we sims. Chiazo maybe all. Umvene, Momife. Emanuela. Emanuela Nemerem. Janet Olua came on Mola Day. Glory Ephraim. Thank you guys. And it's amazing to be here. Ngozi Opara. Thank you so much. Or Rakwe Chioma. Or Rakwe Chioma. Wonderful. Esther, Esther, um, we have uh, Mary Woloko, Owo, Chine, 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 Anya, Wezima, Vivian Diko Briggs, wonderful, yes, oh, thank you so much, Japo, son, thank you so much uh, for your compliments, I really appreciate it, God bless you. Okay, Cynthia, Adiola, Deniji, Joy, or Johnny Le, Adago, can you believe that there's a, there's so many people on Facebook every day they are always watching us. And a lady sent me a message today. I was at work and I went through a message. She said she follows everything we say here on ATG consistently every day. Another lady called me yesterday with her husband. They are from Oshogo. Uh, the man lives in uh, UK, but the lady is in Nigeria so for, for, some, for some reason. The, the man is visiting her in Oshogo. They called me. And I told them incidentally that I actually am from Oshogo State. I'm a Nigerian, I'm a UN citizen, because I'm a citizen of multiple countries. So I said, Oshogo is my capital, and uh, I visit there once in a while when I'm in Lagos. And um, I was happy to talk with them. In fact, I, 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 we have clients all over Nigeria anyway, so Oshogo is just one of our places anyway. So she was talking to me, I'm like, ah, I know Oshogo well. Ah, da, 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 estate, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you're happy. And, she, and he said, whenever it goes to their doctor, and he mentions stuff, stuff, stuff to them. They wonder, how are they knowing all this? It's not as if they read it on YouTube, Google, but the way they explain the things to their doctor, the doctor knows and feels that they've been somewhere and they know what is going on. And I'm happy that one thing that I love and I'm, I'm always happy is, with is that we are able to change people's mind and infuse them with knowledge. And the things we say here, People are actively taking them on board and they are using them consistently in and out where they are. And doctors, they will know this and they will start producing and giving value to people. If you know what to ask for, you're going to get the right answers. But if you don't know what you want, you're going to get anything. Now, this couple now, they are harmed with information which they will use positively to get the best treatment for their life. For their journey to get pregnant. Anyway, that lady wanted to do his endoscopy at the end of the day. I've told her to go to the ATG center and it will be sorted there as soon as possible. That is one of my joy in ATG. We carry people along, we disseminate information, and we make it ABC simple. That is ATG. That's what we do here. I want to tell you something. If you are an ATG, you owe it to your closest friend to be here. 
if you're an ATG, you are receiving blessings, you are receiving knowledge and understanding, and your closest friend is not here on ATG, whether on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook here, you are doing a disservice to your friend. You're not being nice. You are nice, but you could be nicer. What you should do tonight is to go and invite that your friend to join ATG. More so, we have a seminar this Sunday, 9 p.m. October 24th. And that seminar is a free one. And we expect at least 10,000 people to be in that seminar. It's going to be a wonderful one. We're talking about seven things people can do to increase their chances of getting portable pregnancy. If you've not registered to be in that group, now it's time for you to punch your screen and go and join that seminar group. Now, <laughs> so tonight, once again, I want to say my name is Dr. J. I'm happy to be here. And we move in the sense that we are moving to higher ground in ATG. Remember, a year ago, ATG did not have a laboratory. A year ago, ATG did not have an IVF center. A year ago, ATG was going through a difficult time restructuring. But today we are here. Many people even said that ATG will not be anymore. And I sit down once in a while, I laugh. Sometimes I get scared. But all in all, God is still God. And God will always lift up our banner, your banner, for his praise. And God will not put any one of us to shame in anything we do. It's a pleasure. I want to say ATG is still here. If you know what it is to run a business, you know how difficult it is to keep a business running. We started this journey in 2015, November. And by the grace of God, we are already almost in November 2021. That is six years ago or more. By the grace of God, God has been here. And is still going to be here as we proceed. Now, tonight, I want to talk to you about the woman body. I want to say woman body is the woman, not man. Now, I always keep my model here in my library. And it's that wonderful thing we all know. You see, if you remove, if you compare my body with your body, my listener, the, the, you lady, the only thing I don't have is that I can't bear children. As in I can't carry children physically. I can bear children by God's grace, but I can't carry physically. That's why I say people that women have that extra advantage. Women are actually more powerful. You see, a woman can have children by the grace of God whenever and if they want to. That is God's gift to you. It's your right. And nobody should say otherwise. There's nothing a man can do that a woman cannot do. A woman might do it later because maybe she's rearing children. So time is on her side for, for, for that time being. But a woman has the power to catch up. That is why I tell people all the time, as a man thinks, so he is. As a woman thinks, so she is. Whatever you want, there's nothing stopping you as a woman. And you can get it at your own time, in your own way, by the grace of God. So I want to tell you something today. That if that portion is for you to get pregnant, you won't be denied. Since you are a woman, you are designed to get pregnant. Nothing is going to take away that right. A woman called me today on, on phone. I was talking to her. And she said that what should she do? She's a very close, close friend of mine. I won't mention names. Okay. She said, what should she do to get pregnant? Or in order to get pregnant? Now, she said she just got serious about trying to get pregnant now she's been busy with her business but now she wants to settle down what can she do to get pregnant so i told her first of all as you being a woman you were designed purposely to get pregnant if and whenever you want to okay and she said she's ready i said so everything is already in you but if you think you have any reason not to get pregnant if you've been trying before she said no she's not been trying before then start trying have regular intercourse use pre-seed lubricant she said what is pre-seed lubricant i said pre-seed lubricant is designed as a special lubricant which helps the vagina environment and makes the vagina environment very very conducive for sperm transport it's like you have a tar road especially at the start. Hmm? So they might have some bottles there. Pre-seed will smoothen out those bottles and make sperm transport glide like skating through, skating on ice and make that transport journey easier to transpire for the sperm. It makes the vagina comfortable and conducive for sperm transport. And I told her, you can use pre-seed anyhow you want. This com it comes with, with a, a small syringe. You can use it to, to, to push in and squatting the pre-seed lubricant in your vagina. Or you can rub it on your husband's 
erect penis before he enters into the place. So I said before the man enters into the place and enter into the dragon, you should first of all smoothen the place with ice cream. That is pre lubricant. It makes it easier. And most people that has followed my instruction here on ATG to use pre lubricant, they are already pregnant. They won't tell you, but they know. So when I say things here, when we say things here, we say it backed up with medical knowledge. I left school, medical school in 2002. Yeah. I left medical school in 2000. In fact, we finished our last exam in 2001. But they, they, they did their celebration for us in April 2002. So I finished school in 2001. But I left school officially in 2002. All my set, 30th of April. So I've been doing this thing for the last close to maybe 19 years or so. I'm sure you know what 19 years is. 19 years is. Or ha, whatever you put it. So the things I say here. They're not just because I, I think about them. And I've been doing gynecology since then. So I have a fair bit of knowledge about the structure and the way the body of a woman works. At least the ovary and the vagina. I may not know the way the mind of a woman works, so, but I know how the body functions, the body of a woman. That is what I learned in school in physiology in University of Lagos. If you don't know me, you can go ask people. There's a lady called uh, Dr. Bimi. She runs Ask the Pediatricians, okay? In fact, our model is what we use in ATG. She was my classmate in medical school. She's a consultant pediatrician now. So the things we say here are well-founded. And I didn't fly out from medical, from, from medical school. I went to a proper medical school in University of Lagos. So we know what we are saying here, okay? And uh, most people know me, and they know our physical location. ATG is not just an online group. We are a physical group. We have a physical hospital, we have a physical laboratory, a physical IVF center, and we are here on Facebook. And also, we have a certified app on Android and yet to be satisfied also on iOS. So, we are a physical business and we run a lot of things, see, by the grace of God. So, it is not just some people they pay to it. They say, Ah, I paid. I've not received an email. We'll get to you. I've joined the eight antenatal, antenatal group. They haven't answered me. We'll answer you. So, anyway, I was speaking to this lady. She was trying to get pregnant now. She wanted to start actively. I said, This is the time. There's nothing wrong with you. Four things must always be in place for you to get pregnant. Four things. And I said, The number one thing is that you're having regular sex. Most people listening to me, they want to get pregnant. But they are not having a regular sex. You say, ask them, when did you have sex last? They say, eh, eh, three months ago. Where's your husband? It's in America. It's in London. It's in Germany. And you're not having a regular sex. We have sex when it comes for when I'm ovulating. She comes to Nigeria. My brother, having sex during ovulation only gives you 30 to 40% chances of getting pregnant. To get pregnant, you got to have sex two to three times a week. Yes, I know it's not easy. For some people, economically, it's not easy. You have to be around all the time. It's not easy. I know. I've been through that thing before. But you must find a way. A way to get a compromise and have regular sex. That's number one. Regular sex is paramount. If you want to get a job, the only thing you must do is to fill applications and go and attend interviews. To get a job, you got to fill the application form and go for interviews regularly. Number two. We need to check that you're ovulating. And people come to me and say, Doctor, I'm not, I've not seen my egg, egg white. I'm not ovulating. How do you know you're not ovulating? I've not seen egg white. I'm yet to understand who made it a rule in this world that you must see egg white to be able to confirm that you're ovulating. Egg white is not a guarantee to confirm whether you're ovulating or not. Egg white is not a guarantee. Egg white, if you see egg white, it might mean you're ovulating almost 85% of time, but it's not a guarantee. To know that you're ovulating, we must do many things. Hormonal profile test. Checking about six hormones which are paramount. Those six hormones are reproductive hormones. And we do them. LH, FSH, between day 2 to 5 of your cycle. Prolactin, progesterone, day 21, progesterone, I mean. We do your AMH, that is anti-molarian hormone. Your testosterone, we must do them. And this will give us indication, especially your day 21 progesterone to say, are you ovulating or not? And once we do them, we can give you a good advice to say, yes, madam, you're ovulating. And most importantly, if you are having 
regular period. If your periods are regular, you're likely to be ovulating. Now, here goes another wahala. People will now say, I don't have regular cycle. Ruth Yama Smith. Uh, when, whenever I'm being in Nigeria, I'll let you know. I'm not in Nigeria now. I'm in UK now. But we plan to go to Nigeria soon. I will announce. In fact, once we're coming to Nigeria, we will release appointments so that you can book and I can consult with you in Lagos physically. Before I go to Nigeria, I will let my secretary know so she can have my appointment schedule and she can book you to be for you to we need to see you in my office physically in Lagos. Okay, so we're gonna have sessions. I sessions I can see you. I can counsel people, couples regarding fertility issues and also about sexual issues to improve your sex life. We'll be going through all that. So don't worry. By December, January, I'll let you know my plans and they will book. So. Don't worry. And there's a way we'll book the appointment so that you, are, you have a fixed appointment and there's no issue. Number two, I said again. Number one, regular sex. Number two, ovulation. We'll come to ovulation again before I finish today. So hold on, we're about ovulation. Number three is that we must know whether there's any blockage in your tube. It's important that we do HSG or laparoscopy and diet test or isosolosapingogram to know if there's any blockage in your tube. If you're ovulating, you're having regular sex and the tubes are blocked, you not get pregnant. Now, there's nothing God can do. I'm not God, but I'm just saying that scientifically, theoretically, if you ovulate and there's no way the egg can get into your tube and get into the womb cavity, so the egg must be able to pass through ovulation, boom, enters into the tube, run along the tube and enter into the womb cavity if there's any blockage in the tube it can't get there no pregnancy somebody asked me that eh but if the egg is released into the tube and it can't move because the, egg, the tubes are blocked what will happen to the egg the egg will degenerate the egg will degenerate so we must do hsg to check if your tubes are blocked or not okay now people will go and do scan it's important Scan is designed to check if there's any structural problems with your womb. First of all, scan will even tell us whether you have womb. Scan will tell us whether you have two wombs. Some people, they have two wombs together, joined together. Some people, their womb has two cavities. They have two uh, services. We must do scan to check, okay, whether you have a womb, first of all. Okay? Scan will check whether you still go over it. Okay? Scan is not designed to check if you have infection. Yes, if you have infection, scan might be useful to confirm it or to give us a better clue what the infection looks like in case it's, I mean, where, 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 where it's collected. But so some people do scan, they say, eh, they said I have PID. Scan could be suggestive of PID. They said I have pus in the part of the doctor, so I have PID. What is PID? Pelvic inflammatory diseases, basically infection that can cause blockage and damage to your tube. But scan will say, eh, they said that I have eh, some skin or free fluid in my part of Douglas. What is part of Douglas? Part of Douglas is that space behind your womb cavity. If you got infection, there could be pus collecting there that can damage your tube. But don't forget that fluid in the part of Douglas does not always mean infection. If you ovulated like today now, there will be fluid in your part of Douglas. If you got pregnant and you got ectopic pregnancy, it can cause bleeding and be collecting blood in your part of Douglas. So, seeing fluid in a part of Douglas does not automatically mean that you got infection. It does be suggestive of infection. To know if you got infection, what we need to do is to do swaps from vagina and to see what infection this is and how it can be treated. That is what should be done. So, scan is primarily to do what? To check if you still got your womb and if you still got ovaries. That's all. That's all scan do, does. Okay, that's that. Number two, let's proceed. Number four, the last thing you must, one of the things that must be done, okay, to know if you're okay is don't forget the man. Some men, they got no sperm. They've had operations done before, maybe a knee operation, and it's damaged their tubules that carry sperm out of this, because sperm is produced, sperm is produced in the testicles and it goes through a lot of tubes and is stored in a vesicle there it mixes with many things for your prostate and then once a penis is erect sperm is released into kidney vagina is designed for each other mm -hmm. o times zero is equal to zero so if you got sperm produced 
but the tubes that lead them out is blocked, maybe from infection or from whatever reason, then sperm is not good, it's not produced well, that's problem. So it's not just the fact that you're ovulating or, or your tubes are not blocked or blocked or you're having regular sex, is the mom shooting proper bullets? Is, is it live bullet or is it blanks? We need to do semen analysis. So that's why I want every man listening to me. If your wife is going to the challenge on a bit get pregnant, you must check your sperm count. There's nothing wrong in you checking your sperm count to know if it's adequate or not. Check your sperm count. Olivia Ikedima, I'm in UK. Yes, I can consult with you via my WhatsApp number. What you just need to do is to follow the links, get registered. And once you get registered through our WhatsApp link or through our uh, payment link, automatically my number pops up in your phone and I chat with you. If you pay and you send your payment evidence through um, through email, you get an, a reply from my secretary and you get a link to register and to link up with me on my WhatsApp. Okay, fine. Let's move on. So number one, regular sex. Number two, ovulation. Number three, no block tubes. Number four, semen analysis. Apart from that, we should do a ultrasound scan to check if you got a womb. Some people got no womb. Some people they've had operation before from for in the past and they've had their ovaries removed. They did not know. They did not know. So when you check them, check your scan. Don't forget. Scan is not just to check for infection, it's to check if you got ovaries and womb particularly. Very important. What are we looking for in husband's sperm count? Let me tell you something. If a man comes to me, okay, and the sperm count is low. Or no sperm count at all. If the sperm count is low, maybe tariff 25 million, 25 million per meal, you know, in, in the ejaculate. You see, when you see sperm itself, okay, that fluid you see is semen. It's like looks like spit, like, like looks like spit. Eh? It's semen. In that semen is sperm, which you can't see. Is that sperm go 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 go? That is the main thing. Those small, small soldiers that can attack is the main thing. Those small soldiers is what precede makes comfortable to swim fast. That is the main thing. We need to count them. If your sperm count is low as a man, we can see if we can give you some vitamins, some vitilovit M, precede, uh, and uh, this one to see if it will boost it up. You repeat the sperm count after about six to eight, about eight weeks after down the line of taking this supplement. And if it's improved, good. If the sperm count is not improved, they will have to start doing some other workup for you. I'll, I'll say that again. So hold on. If the sperm count is not improved, we need to start thinking, why is it not improved? So now let's go to the, to the whiteboard here, everybody. Now listen to me. I'm going to move to the Instagram pages. Here. So let's go here to the uh, whiteboard. If this man does his sperm count and is very, very low, okay, the first thing I want to do is to do the man's hormonal profile. To check is elite FSH hormone and prolactin. Some people are taking some medications, okay, that causes an increase in their prolactin and can affect sperm production. Some people they've engaged in a lot of recreational funny behaviors, taking igbo, cigarettes, alcohol, and it's affecting their sperm count, or even taking steroids for muscle bulk, muscle bulk building. Stop all those things. They can destroy your sperm count. They can destroy your sperm production. So if I check a man's hormonal profile, because this is a hormone that we check in the ladies, okay, the FSH LH hormone, LH, LH hormone, FSH hormone, we check in the men. This hormone are produced in the brain tells the testicles to produce sperm before they are stored, before they come out. So we check these hormones, the LH and FSH hormone. While we're checking these hormones is this, listen. If those hormones produced in the brain, okay, that is the LH, FSH, uh, and prolactin, okay, uh, prolactin, okay, that are produced in the brain, okay. If we check them in that man's blood uh, stream, and those hormones are very, very low, that means that the sperm count is low because the brain has problem not producing enough of those hormones to tell the sperm, uh, the, 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 the testicle to produce the sperm. So we check it. If it's low, there's problem in the brain. Maybe the person is taking some medications, some steroids injection. Um, so he's, he's, you know, taking you know, so, uh, some funny, funny things affecting the hormone production. Now, if the hormone production is normal, so totally normal, but the sperm count is still low, 
I start thinking that this hormone is getting to the testicles. Testicles is they are producing sperm, but it's not coming out. Why? That means that there's probably a block. Okay. Maybe the person has had an infection like gonorrhea, chlamydia, and they've caused infection damage, blockage to those seminal fibrous tubules. And the person is producing sperm, but they can't come out. For such cases, what we do is that we go in and aspirate the semen, um, the sperm, to test and PESA stuff in the laboratory, and we can freeze them or use them for IVF. So we can go and aspirate the sperm. For people that they've got normal hormone production, but the sperm count is low. Okay? So that is how we deal primarily, basically, easily with sperm count. Now, the issue of proper sperm count has got nothing to do with erection. Sperm count and erection, they've really got nothing to do. A man can have erection and their sperm count is rubbish. A man can have good erection and his sperm count could be rubbish. A man can have poor, poor erection problems, but the sperm count is good. Some women, you just need to rub the sperm on the vulva. The vulva is that skin outside, and the sperm will fire in. Okay? So, it's not just the quantity. It's not just the sperm being produced. It's the quality. That, that is why it's not because you are a fine boy. You have good sperm. It's action. That is why if any woman listening to me wants to get married, number one thing is that all of you, two of you, husband and wife, should go and do all your manual profile tests, if possible, and if possible, check your sperm count as a man, do HIV test, do genotype screening, do chlamydia screening, gonorrhea screening. Everything must be done pre-primary, pre-pregnancy. That is why at the laboratory, we have a panel test for people trying to get married. There's no reason why a woman should get, let's forget, let's stop talking about, let, 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 let's say, love, love, love is real, but let's put common sense in this thing. Common sense is God's sense. There's no reason why a, a couple, fiancé or fia, whatever it's called now, I don't know what it's called now, man or woman, sha, that want to get married. There's no reason why two of you should want to get married and you've not done your genotype, your blood group, your vicious factor, your check for HIV, check for rubella, uh, HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, check all your hormonal profile for the woman. If possible to check for all for the man okay check ultrasound scan for woman do vagina swabs the man to do semen count so that you don't carry uh, the city nigeria is hard enough for people trying to get married living as a couple they're now trying to get children becoming difficult nigeria is hard enough IVF is expensive so but if you need it we are ready to assist you but try and let's prevent headache now i'm not saying that if your fiancé has issues, don't marry him. But at least two of you know what you are getting into. You're not going into a black market and then get problem. Two of you, okay, fine. The spam count is low. We can handle it. Okay. I have a friend. His wife, is AS, is him, AS. But they've done the test before they got pregnant. Now they know. Before they were trying to have baby, they did the genetic screening so that they know that if that child has SSO, they won't born. And they have two wonderful, beautiful girls, and none is SS. But at least they knew before they got into the arrangement. This person is a close person to me. Okay? So if two of you know, at least you are eyes wide open, not eyes wide shut, before you enter into that marriage ceremony. I'm not saying because you know that this person has a disease, don't marry the person. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is, at least you know. I'm not angry, uh, Anjay. I'm just saying my heart. You see, when I see couples going through Wahala, I feel for them. I still remember when I was a young boy. My father was a doctor. He rest, passed away. Rest in peace now. There's this couple, this family. They're always in the hospital. They are, as they leave the hospital for one child, the other one is coming back with sick last problem. And they're always there. They're always spending money. Where me, I like the money, sir. But the thing is that you can feel and can see the pain. You see the woman, she tie her, her ego, the thing is falling off. Her gilly is... They are going through stress. They are not enjoying this thing. I don't know where they are now. I pray that God will give them joy and grace. But the thing is that, if you can prevent something, prevent it though. So don't... At, 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 or at least you know, before you enter into that thing, that you are not entering into a black market. You can't walk in the dark in this age. This age is information age. 
If you don't know, it's because you don't want to know. It's not because information is not there. It's just because you do not want to know. This day and age, information is so littered everywhere. Across the internet, across 80D like this. So if you don't want to know in this day and age in Nigeria or anywhere in the world, though, it's because you just, just, just do not want to know. Okay? People are already tagging you to this group. Your friends will lead you here. They are saying it in churches. They are saying it in mosques. So if you don't want to know, Nayawala, because it is just too not done again. You got to know, you have to know, and you should know. Not only knowing, you know, acting upon information you know. Knowing is knowledge. Acting upon knowledge in a sensible way is wisdom. Okay? It's what? Wisdom. Okay? So, let us proceed. So, you've done everything you're supposed to do. If you've done all these four things that I said at the beginning, and yet pregnancy is not coming, there's some things we should do. I'll always tell you, I'll come to ovulation and also with irregular bleeding later today as we continue. We are already 30 minutes here, but I feel so much joy spending time with you guys today. I feel so much enthusiasm and that energy for me to speak out my mind today. There's a question here about use of virgin cream as lubricant. I don't know about virgin cream, okay? What I know is what I've said. Pre-sale lubricant is what I know, okay? And it's available on Amazon, on Jumia. In fact, now, because of demand now, we have it in ATG office now. PC lubricant is available on our ATG office. Just call the number tomorrow. Ask for Nikkei or Dr. Chioma and our nurse Yemi. They will give you PC lubricant. It's available. Virgin cream, I'm not sure of it. I've heard about it before, but honestly, I don't know much about virgin cream. People do suffer from things that affect getting pregnant. Lady Wooks Mickey, you said you're diagnosed with hemosoc cyst. I don't know what hemosoc cyst though. There's nothing called home hemosoc cyst. There's nothing called hemosoc cyst. It's, there's nothing called I don't know what's hemosoc cyst. In then now, I've already answered your question about that uh, virgin cream. I don't know much about it. I have to go and read it, but I've heard about it before. I think that place, I think it's produced by some. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Let me not say what I don't know. So I, I don't commit myself. I don't know honestly. I don't know. But get pre-seed cream. Pre-seed. Uh, Chinenye is pre-seed. P R E S E E D. P R E S E E D. Pre-seed cream. Chlamydia is also a defect in the vagina swab. Yes, Lady Empire. Thank you. Nifemi Adebola. Thank you, my sister. Ijoma nine six nine five. How are you on Instagram? Facebook. Uh, YouTube, welcome. I heard that Facebook, they are changing their name soon. Whichever way, we will find them. We will be there. We are in Lagos. ATG office is in Lagos. No, we're not in Abuja. ATG office is in Lagos, Nigeria. Ifi, Igbo Abushi. Thank you so much. Ifi, you're beautiful. You're welcome here. And Princess Uju Uzo. Now, if you are having a regular period, I've seen many ladies come to me. Doctor, my period was 24 days last month. 27 days this time home is now a different one. If you're having regular periods mm -hmm. and it's been going on for more than one year or more than six months, you're having a regular period, you have this bleeding in between your periods. Hello, Yemi, Yemi Bekis is here. My not my chief nurse at the ATG Gift Center. You lost Yemi Bekis is here already. Yemi Bekis, wonderful. So if you need pussy lubricant, just call my office tomorrow and ask to speak to Yemi Bekis. She'll tell you how much it is and how to get it. And she get it supplied to you, okay? And you can pick it up anytime once it's available. Easy. And our office is straight away on the expressway. You can walk in and pick it up there. And ATG IVF center is open. And if you're going to infertility, you want to get pregnant, it's time for you to start your journey. Start now without delay. Our seminar on Sunday is 24th. It's not Saturday, 9 p.m. It's Sunday. 24th of October 2021. All things being equal by the special grace of Almighty God. No, back to irregular bleeding. Irregular bleeding, bleeding in between periods, more than six months, must be investigated. Start, start first with examination. 
We examine you to see if there's anything wrong with your cervix. If you have bad cervix, disease in your cervix, it can cause bleeding. If you have cervical polyp, cervical erosion, or you have polyp in your womb, endometrial polyp, they can come out, be so big, and they can cause bleeding. They can cause irregular bleeding. We need to examine you to see all this. We need to do a, an ultrasound scan to check your womb to see if there's any obvious problem in your womb. Okay? And if we can't find any obvious problem and your bleeding is still persistent, we need to do a stereoscopy to look into your womb cavity to check if there's any polyp, any submucous fibroid in your womb cavity that must be removed and treated. By the way, to if you have Asherman syndrome, all those Jagbalawa cobweb, scar, scar tissue in your womb cavity, they must be removed through a stereoscopy. And we do have it at ATT Center. We can get it done for you easy without wasting time. A stereoscopy must be done. If you're going through, you're having irregular period, recurring miscarriages, or you're having failed IVF, more than twice, a stereoscopy must be done at least to check your womb cavity to see if there's any obvious reason why that IVF is failing. Can a pregnant woman take lemon? Why not? Every fruit in season, every fruit ripe is safe for anybody, including pregnant mama. There's no unsafe food. There's no unsafe fruits. Every fruit in season ripe is safe for consumption. People say pineapple is not safe. Who said so? Abaluma is not safe. Who said so? Mango is not safe. Who said so? Cashew. Who said so? Sooner or later, they'll say that a pregnant woman cannot eat a bar. Any food eaten in moderation, any fruits in season, well ripened and naturally ripened, is safe for any pregnant woman at any trimester, whether second, first, or third trimester, or even at breastfeeding safe. Okay? Let's leave that one. We're talking about ovulation now. I said at the beginning that you don't have to see slippery discharge to guarantee that you're ovulating. If you have endometriosis, you can get pregnant as far as it's not blocking your tubes. Can everybody put this up for me, please? Moderators, can you let me, let me put this out as a poster? You can get pregnant with endometriosis as far as it's not causing damage or blockage to your tubes. You can get pregnant with endometriosis as far as it's not causing damage or blockage to your tube. Ade Kumbi Adelu, your question is how much is IVF? At the ATG IVF Center, simple IVF, straightforward, where you use your own sperm husband, you use your own egg. Use your own husband's sperm. Use your own egg. It's 1.1. 1.1. You pay for your drugs, which is affordable. But for IVF, straight away, 1.1. So tomorrow morning, call and dial that number that Yemi has put up on the screen. You can see Princess Yemi Beckers, our nurse, that she's put up the number for the IVF on the screen. Call her to, to, tonight, uh, tomorrow morning, 10.30 or 9 o'clock or 9.30. Call her. And we have two numbers. Just in case your call did not go through. You have, we have two numbers. You can call the second number or text us on WhatsApp if that number is busy. You know, in the morning, 9 o'clock, we get many calls coming in. And if we are busy on the call, we can't pick up your call. Send a text that we should call you back. Just put text, kindly call me back. Yemi will call you back. And we have two numbers now for the ATG IVF Center. It's a customer service line. And there's that WhatsApp line they've sent to you. Call that number on mo or tomorrow morning and then we will give you all the codes. Just in case you need egg, sperm donor, you need egg donor, genetic, gen genetic something, you need family balancing, and so on and so forth. We have all this cost. Then we will give it up to you. Increased morning sickness and upper abdominal pain at 12 weeks is normal. Yes, you can have morning sickness getting worse in 12, 12, 12 weeks. As far as the pregnancy is in your womb, as far as you've done scan and it's confirmed that your pregnancy is in the womb cavity, as far as you've done scan, and it's confirmed that this baby habit and in that pregnancy is okay. People that have twins, they have worse morning sickness. People that have twins, they have worse morning sickness. If he, Ibuabuchi, Yemi has already given you the number of the IVF center. You were told that HVS swab test is different for chlamydia. Yes, it's true. HVS, I, I, I've said this already before in ATG year at a time. HVS is high vaginal swab. It's done for 
particular bacteria that live in the vagina. Chlamydia swab and gonorrhea swab is done by what we call endocervical swab. Okay? What we need to understand is there are different bacteria that can colonize the vagina. The vagina is open outside. There are different bacteria that can colonize bacteria. Some bacteria will be picked up by a normal swab, low vagina swab, like the GBS. The group B, so the cocoa that can affect babies when babies are born, can live in the lower vagina. We check that by lower vagina swab. We also have a high, a high vagina swab to pick up organisms like bacteria that can colonize the high vagina. To check for chlamydia, to check for gonorrhea, we do what we call endocervical swab, ECS. Endocervical swab. Because the, the, chlam the chlamydia and gonorrhea uh, bacteria, they live in the cervical uh, gl 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 glandular cells area. They don't live in the... See, the, the skin of vagina is what we call non-stratified squamous epithelium. Okay? No, 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 it's non keratinized okay? Sorry, non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. That's the vagina. But the one in the cervix is glandular and the cervical, okay? Those ones, the chlamydia and gonorrhea love them. So to pick them up, we must do endocervical swab to check for those ones. So your eye vaginal swab will not pick chlamydia and gonorrhea, but it will be picked up, it will pick up chlamydia and gonorrhea if we use a different swab separate swab for endocervical cells to pick up the chlamydia and gonorrhea. It's important to, you want to get pregnant, you must do it. You want to get pregnant, two of you, man and woman, go to ATT Center tomorrow and ask them for pre-pregnancy package and you get the full price and you can get it all done there. The stereoscopy at ATG is currently 300. The stereoscopy at ATG is currently 300. Our stereoscopy includes diagnostic and Therapeutic. We we see what is there and we treat immediately. We don't charge you extra for treatment. It's straightforward. See and treat. Okay. How much is ipolactin? Ipola if ipolactin you got ipolactin, it will stop you from having a regular period. Hypolactin will stop you from having period regular period. Oh, can you see? I've been corrected by my secretary. Nick is my secretary. She always said, stereoscopy is 330. Sorry. Stereoscopy is 330 at the ATG Center. Thank, thank you, Nick, for correcting me. Thank you, Nick. Nick is my wonderful secretary, my wonderful manager there at ATG IVF Center. So, stereoscopy is 330. It's been, it's, it's been increased. Thank you, Nick. God bless you. Wonderful lady. What causes itching in the private part when testing says no infection? If you got an infection, and your swab you're done properly, it will pick up whatever infection it, there is. If that swab is not picking up any infection, and you still have persistent infection, then go and get your swab done elsewhere. Get a second opinion. Second opinion, get it. If you still got itch in your vagina, get examined at the ATG office or at the hospital there. Get examined. Let us know what's going on. 27 million sperm count is too slow, but it's not too bad. What you need to do is you use pussy lubricant and use Adizua to boost your sperm count and get you pregnant. You can also get the fat little bit M at our office as well. What can cause miscarriage twice? You can have what we call uncontrolled diabetes, uh, poorly controlled thyroid function test. You can have infect problems like antiphospholipid syndrome. So go to our office tomorrow, get consulted by Chioma. She'll run your test to check for antiphospholipid syndrome. And then we know if that's your problem. And we can get it fixed as soon as possible. You're always having miscarriage. Come to our office tomorrow. Call the office. Speak to, speak to Yemi. Speak to Dr. Chioma. They'll get you booked in for consultation. And they'll run all those tests for you to know why you and your husband are, or are going through this issue. You want a male child? We can do family balancing at our ATGIVF center. Can HSG check woman cavity? Like, no. HSG is not to check your womb cavity like a stereoscopy. No. HSG does not check your womb cavity. HS is to check if your tubes are blocked or not. Can a woman get pregnant with one tube blocked? Yes. You just need only one tube to get pregnant. Okay? Apparently, if you get pregnant with the fact that you got only one good tube, once you got pregnant, get a scan done after your hand, your five or six weeks pregnancy. Five or six, six weeks pregnancy, get a scan done to ensure that this pregnancy is in the womb. Because you have only one tube, the other one is blocked, 
you have a risk of having ectopic pregnancy. That is pregnancy locked on in your tube. So you just get a scan done to ensure that that pregnancy is not a topic pregnancy once you get pregnant, okay? You want to do IVF? Speak to my secretary tomorrow. My secretary is already on this screen. Yemi, and uh, Nike, and our nurse, Yemi, is there. Call them tomorrow when 9 a.m. to give you the breakdown of IVF, all the total cost, okay? 10 a.m. Call them tomorrow morning, okay? Good. To know if you have blocked tubes, Sylvia Duru, you need to do HSG. But before you go for HSD, you do a uh, swab, eye vaginal swab and endocervical swab to ensure that there's no infection in your vagina. We don't want to push infection in your vagina into your womb cavity during HSD. So you must do eye vaginal swab and endocervical swab. Yes, before you go for HSD. In fact, before we do your hysteroscopy at ATG Center, we do all these tests as well. Hysteroscopy is to look into your womb cavity. HSD, don't let them fool you. HSD is not designed to look into the womb cavity. I know in Nigeria, we like cutting corners, okay? I know you want to do HSG to get the value of hysteroscopy. Then I lie. This, everything was designed for a purpose. HSG is just to check the patency of the tube, okay? Thank you, guys. I need to go off now. My mouth is dry. My, my, mouth, my mouth not be dry in Jesus Christ, God's grace, okay? When I'm exhausted now, the Lord is my strength. I'll see you again tomorrow. Once again, I want to say I love you all. Most importantly, see you soon. And don't forget to get registered for that seminar for Sunday, 24th, October, 9 p.m. I'll be there. It's free one. We're expecting 10,000 participants, free of charge. See you soon. I love you all. I love myself, too. God bless you. Bye-bye.